The Great Somme Offensive had sputtered to a close in the last months of 1916. Control's still out, sir. It was now the new year and the North European winter descended on the battlefield. The battlefield turned into a moonscape by a million shells. This desolate place marked where 300,000 British soldiers fell for the gain of a few miles. The guns were mostly silent now except for an occasional burst of hate. The soldiers' energies were concentrated on battling those old foes. Rain and cold. Few of us could ever forget the winter of 1916-17. Also buried here were illusions and false hopes for a quick end to the war. Two mighty armies faced each other over a few yards of muddy ground in a paralysing stalemate. And while generals in warm chateaus puzzled to find an answer, the frontline soldiers were united in a common misery. Old Fritz was just as badly off. could have killed us. Well, you could have killed them. Yeah, but I didn't want to. There aren't many I want to kill, mate. Don't let the Colonel hear you say that. It's stupid. It's crazy to join. Ah, uh, we all were, Rolly. I'm not any good at killing people. Hey, <laughs> you're good enough, mate. I hate this war. I hate the mud and the lice. The bloke's been wounded and blown apart, killed. But there's my mates. Best. And what I mean is that there's times, even now, that I've been so happy. I love the war. I wouldn't have missed if I quit. And that's gotta be wrong, hasn't it, Marty? <laughs> hey, Barrington. What are you doing, Senator? Mm -hmm. I thought you knew, chum. You second Louis. <laughs> Thank God. What's up? Well, he's so clean. Lieutenant Armstrong's platoon. That's right. Take me to him, please. You seen you, Digger? Good night. Your suggestion, Sergeant? Yes, Mr. Armstrong. I think if we can get through platoon to come up behind you, we can probably find some way across. What do you reckon I could charge for this, Bill? Oh, bad. 30 francs. What's the markup? A new officer, sir. 100%. This is Lieutenant Armstrong. A second Lieutenant Earnshaw reporting, sir. Glad to meet you, Mr. Earnshaw. This is Sergeant MacArthur. Glad to have you with us, sir. Uh, first time to the front, Mr. Earnshaw? Yes, sir. You can forget the sir. I think you'd better show Mr. Earnshaw around, Corporal. I'm going to put the head down. Uh, take a look at the trench maps, sir. Need any help? With what? That name, Earnshaw. He's that joker from Parliament, that windbag politician. Hey, that's right, the wood to God. That's him. Now you are going forth to war. Would to God I could go with you. 
Yeah, only someone's got to stay and run the country. Would to God it wasn't me. Okay, perhaps we should look at the trenches now, sir. That's my dad, would to God, Earnshaw. Did you hear me? Yes, I did, and it's none of my business. Oh, yes, it is. Talk about me all you like, but not about my father, you hear? And pass the word. Yeah, I'll do that. Meanwhile, we've got a war going on here. One moment, Corporal. Lance Corporal, what's happening? Not a lot. Let's have a look. I can see them. Well, of course you can. Do you think they weren't there? Get back to it. Who's on this thing? Huh? What? Put a couple of bombs over on the trench <coughs> in front. Now, sir, that's how you heard me. Should... Oh, God. Fire. Fire. Look at the enemy lance, Corporal. Well, up a couple of yards. Give them four. Sir, you don't understand. The Germans... Four! Be... And keep a good lookout. Fire. Dead on. Hey, get them nothing! You even not a bloody thing! Now, what's going on, Mr. Earnshaw? We were instructed at officers' training school to be aggressive at all times, You sir. were, were you? Yes, sir. And if the enemy fires, we are to fire back double. Now, they've Lord. sent four, so I'm sending eight. What do you say, Kaiser? He wants to know what's going on. You tell him we're very, very sorry, but we have a new officer that didn't know the rules. Entschuldigung! Es tut uns leid, aber wir haben einen neuen Offizier und er kennt sich noch nicht aus. This way, Mr. Now, this is not the officer's training school, Mr. Renshaw. This is the real war. We in Fritz have an arrangement. Nobody, Mr. Renshaw, nobody fires before 1630 hours. Now, for the past five months, we have been shot at every hour that God sends. Now, we get shot at by arrangement, Mr. Renshaw. We rather like it that way. We and intend that... to keep it that way. So now maybe we can all get some sleep around here, eh? Sorry, sir. <sighs> yeah, well. It's all right, Mr. Renshaw, you weren't to know. But just take it easy. There's a lot of Germans left. As you were. Hmm. See, he's going to learn the hard way, eh? Don't worry, you get to know the road. No, no, please stay. You're a most welcome interruption. Not much Christian comfort here. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, uh, just some rather surprising responses to the letter I wrote to the paper. Not uh, particularly savoury reading. Never mind about that. How have things been with you? Well, we've been in the city. Rupert doing his war work, and now we're home for a while. I've missed you, Thea. Miss myself, I wouldn't say that. What's that? Uh, uh, this is the coward's feather. Well, I've heard of these, but I've never actually seen one. Oh. Have you heard others? Yes, 1916 was a good year. 1917 promises to be even better. Oh, don't joke about it, George. I wish I could. I'm front page news in the Catholic and the radical journals. Yes, I've read about it. Anglican priest speaks out against conscription. 
the voice of reason in a sea of bigotry, you're quite a celebrity. The Archbishop calls it notoriety. You're ruining your career, George. Why? Because the rest of the Church of England is for the war, and I believe that my church should be more than just empire loyalists at prayer. Because, because I believe in the Sermon on the Mount. Because, because I'm naive, because I don't know. Most of all, because this second conscription campaign has, has divided the country. It's unleashed the bigotry and the sectarianism that I thought we left behind us in the old world. I mean, what will become of the ideals of the new Australia? Dignity, equality for all. They've all gone. What do you see, Pud? Nothing. <laughs> what do you mean, nothing? They've all gone. Is it over? For God's sake, Pud, and keep your head down. See anything? Nope. I think he's right. Sergeant, inform battalion I'm sending a patrol out. Yeah. I told you there was no... Shut up! Hang about. Get back. Don't touch anything, all right? Thank God, clear is not here. Anyone home? Well? No, nothing but the rats. Well, let's get out of here. Suits me, mate. Come on. Move! You know, it was my birthday. It's written in your pay book, mate. You told the bloke when you joined up. Put... Did I? Yeah. Anyway, don't worry about it, son. We've got two reasons to celebrate. First time out of the line for months, and your birthday. Right. Huh. What are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a big surprise. <laughs> that Ozzie. sounds all right. Shh. Hey. Ozzie, here. Yeah. Quick, down here. Hey! Oh. Hey! Oh. Oh. Hey! 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 What we have here then, nosy parkers. You mind your own business or you'll get some of the same. What was he doing, robbing the Bank of England? I only asked the way the knocking shop. And then he tried to gain entrance to a blue light house here. What's a blue light mean, Pat? Officer's knock shop. Red lights for the troops. Now, Obby, quick. Listen, uh, why don't we take him back to camp with us, eh? <laughs> We're going to make a few examples of you Australians. You blokes are going the right way to start a riot. That'll be enough from you, laddie. I'll nick you too. Now, listen. No, mate, no. No, we don't need trouble. I'll go quietly. Better get him out of sight. Now we're in for it. You all right, mate? Yeah. We'll go on, Nick, off. Keep your head down! What about us, then? I reckon we better lay low, too. Good idea. Hey, let's not forget what we came for. <laughs> Come on, birthday boy.
I'm sorry you cannot come in here. Oh, that's a shame. Oh. Well, uh, perhaps. Hey, this place is right. Oh. Hey, put get this in here, mate. Sorry. I think uh, perhaps we can use the private room. Oh, this stuff tickles your nose, Pat. Mademoiselle Fifi, Mademoiselle Colette, and Mademoiselle Claudine. Are they all for me, Pat? Really happy birthday, Put. <laughs> Is that? It's called the Hindenburg Line. You're right. The Germans didn't retreat. They withdrew. Yeah. We'll never take that. Never. You're fighting the way our Germans do. Well, my old mate, you should have more confidence. Of course we're going to take it. Tomorrow, head on like a bull at a gate. You're not serious. I heard the 4th Division's going to get first go. Just to make it more exciting, there's going to be no artillery barrage before they go in. You must be joking. They're going to surprise them. Just infantry and tanks. Tanks? Haven't seen any of them around here. Anyway, the bloody things haven't worked yet. <laughs> Neither have head-on infantry assaults, but that doesn't seem to worry old General Goff. His posse is all over again. Oh, no, mate. Posse ears was just slaughter. This lot's... This lot's premeditated murder. See anything? Fourth are trying to pull out. Fritz is the whole area covered by fire. Another bloody stuff up. Right out. Five minute warning to move. Get your gear on. Bloody heads. Yeah, too right. We've been in the line nine months now. Hey, there's a rumour going round that the frogs are telling their officers to nick off at gunpoint if necessary. Shut up, Dingo. That's not what I had in mind. Yeah? What did you have in mind, Corporal? Nothing. Come on, man, out with it. In front of the platoon. Look, none of us mind the risk. It's just the stupidity and the bloody waste. See? You may all have your own opinions on the higher direction of this war. I can't stop that. But they will not interfere with your duty as soldiers. Now, in a few weeks, it will be Anzac Day. Two years since this battalion stepped ashore against all odds on Gallipoli. There's scores of dead mates from this platoon who thought that worth fighting for. Mateship! That's what's held the AIF together throughout this bloody war. Now, there's 10,000 of our mates in another division going through bloody hell just over there. I'm going to do what I can to help them. By God, you're going to come with me. We're going to have to gather all the 4th Division wounded we can from no match.
me. What field you pressing over here? You had it one. We got in. Then, no ammo, no bombs. Stretcher! Order our order, sir. <laughs> uh, the, the lowest! The lowest gun will! The lowest gun will cover our throttle! Coming! Stretcher! Yes, I don't single! Yeah, keep going! Get Nick! <laughs> They keep coming in, just like old Johnny Turk. Yeah, we'll just keep them out of bowling range and we'll all be sweet. Two's gone! Come on, mate, I'll get you back. Piss off, bloody good... Mac! Piss off! Else I'll put you on a charge! You'll never make a charge, Dick Romina! Come on, I'll get you back! I knew it was gonna be today. Now get Bluey out of here while you still can! Go on! Piss off, you sentimental prick! Thank Christ you didn't change, MacArthur. Come on, mate! Number two's gone west, sir. Bluey's all right, I think. MacArthur's hurt bad. He won't be moved. I'll take a look. Kaiser, you're wasting your time. Stretch your bearers. I'm covering you, Kaiser. Cover Kaiser on the way in! All account Oh, Pudden, I haven't seen him! He's out. I saw him run over that way. For God's sake, let's go then! Tom MacArthur, the words just... Here, have some of this. Please. What's that? <laughs> Black label at least if I know Pat. What would I do without you? the other way around, Harry. You got us through with minimum casualties. It's all madness, Martin. Why don't we just pack up and march home? 
That's what I've heard some of the French have been doing, but then they've always prided themselves on their logic. But it's not an Anglo-Celtic trait. What? Ah, you said it before. Too many dead mates. Is that sufficient reason to go on killing young Germans just like us? If you'd asked me that back in 1913 when I was still a uni, I, I would have had 10,000 answers. No. Oh, a faint glimmer of reason then. Uh, America's now on the same side as Britain and France, all the great democracies. Must mean something, I suppose. Yeah, that's small comfort. Oh, not to mention the other little ones. Canada, New Zealand, Australia. You expect to survive, Martin? No, do you? No. You know, just before the war, I won a bursary to take geography at university. Oh, yeah. Great initiation here, huh? <laughs> Do you know that Australia is two-thirds dozen? Well, no, the point is that such an unforgiving country like ours, we're going to need the very best resilient people. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, don't you see? They're the ones being shot out here. Come on, Harry, that's not original. The American Civil War general said it before. He still can't be all bad. I mean, that bastard Goff ordered the attack today. Why, I, I bet he's having the time of his little life with ours. <laughs> well, here's to the day. And I'm still alive and... To hell with you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> All the bells of hell go ting a ling for you, but not for me. All, All the angels all go sing a ling a ling for you, but not for me. Oh, death, where is thy sting a ling a ling? Yeah, Doc Barrington's in attendance. Maybe I should send him a bill after all. It's my medication. You mean was? Mate, I should make you a general. <laughs> I'm sorry, Thea. It's all right, George. I sometimes find myself going through the motions. What's the point? Oh, well, we, we all feel like that sometimes. And what good has it done to the thousands of mothers who prayed in vain? Oh, the newspaper was filled with the Hindenburg battle. Heroic attacks by Canadians and Australians. After three years, one knows that heroic is just another word for heavy casualties. That's where my imagination gets hold of me. Martin I wasn't it... in the last attack. He's written to you again. He hardly ever writes to me. Yes, he has written to me again, but you wouldn't want to read those letters there. In them, he... Well, he tells the truth about the war. It's his way of unburdening himself. How is he? Oh, he's remarkably stable, considering the circumstances. Circumstances which uh, a few years ago I would have thought would have taken an ordinary man to the brink of insanity. How can they bear it? They depend upon one another. They have a fierce brotherhood in which each sustains the other. It's uh, something approaching the Christian ideal. Ironical, isn't it, that war should produce that? 
We can't sit here, she said, because it prickles. <laughs> I swear to God, I hadn't gone near it by then. Boy, should I say to the lads, just a few announcements. Ah, oh, crikey, Skipper. No, we are not going back up the line, Dingo. Even the powers that be feel that nine months straight is enough. They have declared leave for the whole battalion. Blighty leave. Alright, lads, promotion list. Not this time, Paddy. <laughs> the Colonel has recommended that Corporal Barrington be commissioned in the field. Until the commission comes through, you'll be acting platoon sergeant. Colonel Barrington. Officer Barrington, eh? Lads, Corporal Flanagan. We'll go to court. Uh, Sir, uh, uh, Michael 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 Michael. Private Schmidt, we'll go to Lance Corporal. Are you, Kaiser? There was another name on the promotions list, but it was withdrawn at the man's request. It's a pity we need all the experienced NCOs we can get. Lastly, I have the very great pleasure and honor of announcing the award of the Military Medal to Lance Corporal Schmidt for his work on the Hindenburg Line. Ah, Good boy. Oh, Here you are, the bill again. Name out of a hat, that one. <laughs> Mum would be proud of you, guys. Yeah, killing your relatives. It's about Puddin' Parsons. That report has been sent on the old Somme battlefield. Isn't that where those bludgers are? Where the organised groups of deserters are believed to hang out, yes. Now, the Colonel has agreed if we can get him back, he'll be charged on a less count of absence without leave rather than desertion in the face of the enemy. You mean a month in the jug rather than a life? Exactly, right? Flanagan. Now, I want you to take a party out and fight. They say these deserters are a pretty desperate lot, so you'll go fully armed. Suits me, sir. I'd love to get a crack at those mongrels. Just bring Puddin back as your first priority, Flanagan. Yes, sir. Now report to Company HQ in 30 minutes for details. And good luck. Mr Armstrong, uh, what about you, sir? Oh, yes, I almost forgot. I've been promoted to captain and will take charge of the company. Hey, good on you, sir. Thanks, Bill. Cheers, lads. I might have known. What's the matter? Don't you reckon I can handle it? I just want to see the ruthless streak at work. Keep moving. That's far enough for the moment, thank you, gentlemen. Unless you'd rather we started shooting. Who's in charge? Well, well, the sergeant and the corporal. How oh, nice of you to drop in, but I'm afraid you're a little off course. The Germans are over that way. We're a peaceable lot here, as long as we're left alone. You've got one of our blokes. We want him back. Come, come, Corporal. That's no way to speak to a... What am I this week? Major, high time I was the Colonel, don't you think? High time you're in the jug, you bludger. You're alive. Try to be more polite. You may stay that way. Is this the lot of you? So few. You have no chance. No chance at all. What I mean? What's your name? Flanagan. What's yours? Edward Kelly. I see we share a common heritage, but uh, you missed out on the child. I missed out on a lot of things, pal. But going back on my word wasn't one of them. This discussion is becoming tiresome. Look, go back to your silly European civil war. That's all it is. If they insist on wiping each other out, it's no business of Australians. Now, listen, mate. Surely you can see the peace dictated by Germany would be disaster for Australia, too. Well, the sergeant has a voice. As to the question, 
It's highly theoretical, therefore boring. Oh, and uh, don't appeal to my altruism. I lost it on the Somme. Nevertheless, if they win, they wouldn't take too kindly to your sort. We've been studying practical survival. We're very good at it. Now go. Not without Puddin. Goodbye. You'll have to shoot us first. Even then, we'll take a couple of you with us. After that, they'll send out the battalion. Things could get messy. You really care about Putin, don't you? He's our mate, and he needs looking after. We'll ask him. Come on, Putin! Martin? Your friends, so they say. Do you want to go back to them? To the war? Listen, Mr. Kelly. You were real good to me when I wasn't feeling well, but... I really miss them. Idealism is the curse of the age. Here in Europe, that can be lethal. On your way. Go on, man. Here, Robbie, give us a hand. I remember an Australian actor named Edward Kelly. My public is everywhere. He used to play English gentleman roles. Still does, old boy. Still does. Unfortunately, they're quite, quite genuine. So it's official now. What is it? <laughs> that you're a gentleman by act of parliament. Thank you very much. <laughs> Actually, uh, I only did it to gain access to the nurses' mess. Mm-hmm. Have you heard we're getting blighty leave? Yes. Well, I don't suppose you could arrange something. No chance. Then. But uh, I'll let you into a little secret. Hmm? I'm going to be in London next week on a gas treatment course at St Thomas's Hospital. You won't tell anyone, will you? <laughs> if you remember what I told you, I haven't forgotten you. No ladies. I promise you. My sister knows you're coming and she'll be there to meet you. It's nice in Brighton this time of the year and she's a very good cook. Be alone from home for you. Thanks, Phil. I'll never forget it. You'll be in Clover, son. She's been on at me for ages wanting to meet my Australian mate, so I couldn't send her any of this lot, could I? You're a real mate. Oh, only thing is, is these three little girls of hers. Regular terrors, they were. Well, I don't mind. I've got a kid sister back home and she doesn't bother me a bit. Ah, oh, that's all right then. Off you go and enjoy yourself. Oh, and remember what I told you. If you feel the urge coming on, go and have a paddle in the sea instead. Don't worry, Blue, I told you, mate, she's got a nice tall friend who's dying to meet you. See you, Bill. Ooh. It's leading a dump. Well, I'm off to see my father's tailor about a uniform. Oh. See you, guys. Look up, sir. Bill, see you. What are you grinning at? Nothing. It hey, looks like it. What's up, man? You're on leave. Leave? Where do I go on leave in London with a name like Wilhelm Schmidt? Appledore Farm, Chislehurst, Kent. That's where you go. Chislehurst? I don't know Chislehurst. You will when we get there. It's where my mum lives, isn't it? Do you think I'd be welcome? <laughs> Any mate of mine will be welcome. Especially one like you that's house trained, Bill. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Look at that. Mm. Hey, tell you, Dick, about you. Martin Barrington. Mr. Murdoch. 
to see you since Gallipoli. How are you? Well, thanks. How's my gallant brother? Oh, he's coming over next week. Thank you. I didn't know you remember here. Oh, my father put me up. They got when this war's over. We get back to real soldiering. What's up with those two? Some people don't like the idea of officers being promoted from the ranks. Well, it works for us, but then again, we're getting shot at, aren't we? What'll it be? Uh, scotch and soda. Make that too, thanks. Staff. Hmm. They're too thick to be anything else. All right, let's have it. <laughs> I tend to be rather a bore about it. You won't bore me. Very well. Our men are magnificent. And in my opinion, our NCOs and junior officers are the best there are. They have to be. Thank you. Go. Because time and again, they're asked to lead their men into one ghastly, bloody shambles after another, watch them get blown to bits or blown to bits themselves. But they keep doing it, and because they keep doing it, they get the lion's share of every hairbrain thrust some mad general dreams up as this week's war-winning battle. I mean, we'd be better off if we lost one. At least they'd pull us out of the line. I mean, believe me, Mr Murdoch, you can't break the stalemate in France by pitting flesh and blood against machine guns, despite what higher command says. And no one seemed to come up with a better way. What about morale? Still good so far, but it's not an inexhaustible resource. I mean, it can't be. Not if they keep making us go on like this. It's getting to the point where we'll end up fighting the staff. Martin. I'm sorry, you'll have to excuse me. There are some men I must see. I'm obliged to you, Martin. Now, you enjoy your leave. Thank I'll you. see you again. Bye. Come in, Keith. Good evening, Prime Minister. Good of you to be available at such short notice. Uh, you know Hanky, of course. Mm. Uh, General Wilson, liaison with the French command, Keith Murdoch. General, just come along. Make yourself at home. Uh, there is strong drink if the other two haven't already disposed of it. No, thank you, sir. Well, then, I would like to start these proceedings with some pleasantries about such things as the weather, but uh, these days even the weather has sinister overtones affecting young men's lives, so I'll come straight to the point. I would like the Australian Prime Minister to join me in the War Cabinet as soon as possible. Can he do it? Well, not for some months, I'm afraid, Prime Minister. He's determined to push the second conscription referendum through. Won't be an easy task. Because of your losses on the Western Front? There are some Australians who are strongly opposed to conscripts sharing the burden that volunteers have endured. The responsible opinion hopes he'll be successful in changing minds. Pity. Pity. Our commander-in-chief is as deeply entrenched as a... as... The Germans in the Hindenburg Line. Yes, unfortunately. Hey, what's another offensive? Another murderous frontal attack like the Somme last year. At Ypres this time, where the Germans must fight. The Germans fight everywhere. Haig must be stopped. Another one of his victories, and there will be no young men left. To be fair, he has good strategic grounds. Even old Marshal Foch has said that an offensive at Ypres would be like a duck's march through a swamp. But he wouldn't say that today. The French army has suffered serious mutinies. Some 61 divisions refuse to attack. Their generals are even worse than ours. So far, it's the best kept secret of the war. The French are pressing for a British attack, anywhere. Lest the Germans realize they can win the war at a stroke on the French front. The Americans are due in any moment, surely. 
Oh, the Americans have magnificent raw material, but they will not be an army for some time. How long? Eight to twelve months. My God. No worries, mate. Lieutenant and Mrs. Barrington. Well, I just wanted to hear what it to... I wanted you to hear what it sounded like. See what they do to me? These highly paid advisors hedge me in with verbiage, constrict my every move. Meanwhile, in France sits a man, Haig, who has enshrined lack of imagination into a creed. He calls it attrition. I call it the devil's arithmetic. Haig still has the confidence of the press lords and the man in the street, Prime Minister. And the palace. So. Fate and the clothes shop of the British upper class have conspired to hand Haig all the aces. Would you have me deliver a funeral oration for the entire generation? If you remove him now, you risk dividing the cabinet and losing the support of the people. I cannot just stand by while Haig presents another butcher's bill. There is one way, Prime Minister. You could agree to the offensive, but on condition. Such as that each step of the offensive be a success before he can go on. Cancelling his blank check, yes. But supposing he continues regardless. His supplies, his reinforcements, his ammunition all come from Britain. And that is under cabinet control. Hmm. Good. Even very good, Wilson. <laughs> they didn't believe me. They didn't believe me. That from this great big world You've chosen me. <laughs> Thanks, Louis. Thanks, Ruth. You have a good leave? Hello, fellas. How's your leave, eh? Hey. Fine. Give us a beer and a uh, cider, please, love. Oh, I make that double, boys. I'll be paying. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a dog with two tails. He has to play. Oh, I wouldn't hey. <laughs> G'day, fellas. Oh, it's good. <laughs> and these are my covers. Just love it when he says covers. <laughs> No good asking if you had a good leave. Oh, it was the best, Bill. It's been a while since you've seen your sister, Angel. <clears throat> oh, by the way, this is your Uncle Bill. Firsty, <laughs> Fiona, Wendy. It's enough from you two. All right, fellas, come on, drink up. Time to go. Here. Where's Pat? He took an extra day, mate. He met an old friend. Oh, there's trouble. Nothing he can't pay for. <clears throat> I have to go. I know. Take care of yourself. <laughs> Silly thing to say. I love you.
God's name have they got to laugh about? Roly kicked a goal over in Blighty. Same again, love. May I get a move on, Roly, or I'll tell her about you and my three nieces. Casanova. Bunyak. No. You blokes have had it rough. Yeah. North of here. Wipers. A big bloody push. Ha ha. But I heard we were winning. Not where we was. Sodden General Goff. You heard of him? Oh yes. We have. Threw us in like lambs to the sloop that they did. Our officers did the rest. Let us head on against wire and machine guns. It's my shop. Is it the blues, Harry? The old Jim Jams? We all get them from time to time, you know. No, Martin, it's not that. Premonitions. I've had one or two, nothing happened. Just dreams. Lots of dreams. Sea of mud and endless battle in the night. Oh, sounds pretty normal, considering the circumstances. <laughs> as if we didn't dream, we'd all go off our rockers. For all the good we're doing, we might as well call it off and march on before more of the lads cop it. What sort of talk's that, mate? We're gonna win this one. Well, they sent the Aussies up. Soon. Poor bastards. I know what you're thinking. We went where we was told. Time, time again. If you're looking at ten platoons, it's just three of us now. It's for the staff. The friggin' staff. Shooting's too good for me. I ought to be crucified. Now, just a minute, mate. We bought. Most of these diggers went through the psalm. We can get the drift. We'll save the rest of your memoirs, sir. Anyway, fellas, cheers. Not good, Wilson? No, Prime Minister. God in heaven. That makes 80,000 casualties for the first three weeks. Yes. And where are we then? About a half a mile from where we started. Ground was uh, not necessarily Haig's aim. Destruction of the enemy. Spare me the more arid reaches of military abstractions. I am the one who has told the people a hundred times that we must win this war. And I am the one who now must look them in the eye. Oh, forgive me, voters and mothers. I didn't know that our general had a theory that if there were only three Allied soldiers left on their feet and one German, then, then we have won the war. Hague must be stopped now. I wouldn't if I were you. All uh, hard riders are bound to come a cropper before long. When? He has a big one planned next week. And? I think the results will be the same. Men in road. He's using both Anzac Corps. That's yours. That's Puddin. Seems to think it belongs to you, lot. If it can think. Yeah, he's ours. You're welcome to him. Get yourself down, then. From now on, you walk. Get down, I can't! Ah! Touch him again like that, Truman, I'll break your neck. What? In front of witnesses. 
There won't be any witnesses, pal. I want you, target! Assholes, get out of here. Help Private Parsons down. No. Right, that. You giving up saluting? Done a great job, mate. Yeah, we'd like to buy you beer sometime. You right, Bud? You'll be right, mate. Oh, mate, we'll clean you up. The big push for 1917 had started nearly two months ago near a place called Ypres. Whatever the high command lacked, it wasn't guns. The whole area was devastated. The offensive had bogged down with both the Tommies and Fritz taking a dreadful hiding. Now it was our turn. How long to the op over, sir? About 20 minutes, Bill. G'day, Pat. Two things going for us, though. For the first time, the Australian divisions were fighting side by side. And secondly, we were commanded by an English general named Plumer who left nothing to chance. Every move was rehearsed. It was a welcome change, now morale was sky high. Even amongst the old hands who knew what we were in for. Let's go, fellas. Come on, men. The action was a complete success. All objectives taken and old Fritz was left groggy on the ropes. Some of us even thought the end might be in sight. As we found out later, it would have been better if we'd failed. Your report to the Prime Minister, General. Read. My dear Prime Minister, it gives me great pleasure to inform you of the sweeping success of our latest blow struck across the Menin Road. It gives me even greater pleasure to imagine the expression on that Welsh conniver's face when he reads this. Justified the hopes. He neglects to mention that this is the third bloody attempt. Oh, Wilson. The wealth and blood of Britain are being poured out over a few bleak acres of Belgium. Our casualties have been relatively light. Anything under 10,000 is a pinprick to him. I therefore propose, ah, here it comes, to deliver a series of blows towards the ridge at Passchendaele. That name has an ominous ring. With the aim of cutting German communications to Belgium before winter, I know I will have your wholehearted support. Oh, he does, does he? Where's that paper from Winston Churchill about a landing in Syria? I think it's too late for that, sir. The papers are already hailing an important victory. Editorial comment is very flattering toward Haig. Damn. Damn. They can't replace me now, Kigel. No, sir. War must be one in the West. It can only be one in the West. From the palace, sir. I think you'll like it. So, counting the 25 reinforcements, the company will be at 80% strength. We're still short three officers. Have you heard anything about officer replacements? Has anyone seen anything of the new lads? No, oh, they're all good blokes. But the uh, training unit in England is still teaching them techniques we discarded last year. So, how long have we got to bring them up to scratch? A fortnight. Three weeks. Uh, so, if it's all right with you, sir, we'll greet them with Sergeant Flanagan. If anyone can break them in quickly, it's him. Harry, you all right? Yes, thank you, Martin. It's just a chill. Bit of a spell hasn't done you any good at all, has it? 
damn solid. Damn solid. My name is Young. Who might you be? Harold Armstrong. These are left. I didn't expect to find you still here. The Colonel asked me to hand over personally. Hand over? What the hell's going on, Harry? And who are you, Lieutenant? Barrington. Ah. What battalion are you from? Not a battalion. The Australian training unit on Salisbury Plain. Training unit, Martin. Captain Young is my replacement. You will accord him all respect. But damn it, Harry. You know, after all you bloody well been through, they just can't send you away like it. A... Piece of worn machinery. It's a medical decision, Martin. I've been boarded unfit. Disturbed action of the heart. D-A-H. Erratic heartbeat. High pulse rate, general debilitation. Starts in the mind, they tell me. Listen, I know what DAH is. Uh, Martin, please, just accept it. It's final. Well, they don't know what causes it, and unfortunately, they can't kill it. Yeah. Hey, Skipper, what's going on? I reckon they're going to take you away or something. Afraid so, Pat. Okay, is there anything we can do, sir? Wish to God there was, Flanny. Look after yourself. Yes, thank you. Uh, listen now, Skipper, as you're leaving, this coat of yours, you won't oh, be bloody clearing. Right, let's, uh, with you, let's call it quits for the time being, huh? Yeah, yeah come on, fella. Right. <clears throat> Mr. Armstrong? Thank you, sir. Now go, Mark. Captain Young, I'll see you in half an hour. I have the courage, Martin. The last thing I wanted to do was to leave them. Or you. Ah, well. It's for your own good. No, Martin, it's for the company's good. There is a very big stunt coming up and I'd just be in the way. I'd be a risk to your lives. Bloody battlefields are danger to our lives. Martin, I am coming apart at the scene. Hey, take it easy, Harry. Take it easy. Discipline. Discipline, do you hear me? You not only couldn't spell it, you obviously have no notion of what the word means. Look at you! Well, I will tell you. Discipline is the thread that binds a military organization together. Do I make myself clear? I'm not impressed by old soldiers who fumble their way through a few battles. From now on we go by the rules. By the book, which was written by cleverer men than you. 
and if not, by the punishment clauses of the Army Act. Do I make myself clear? You'll get us all killed, Bill. Until you are fit for me to lead you into the great battle which is about to commence. From now on, there will be no Christian names. Your Tom, Dicks and Harrys will be lieutenants, sergeants and corporals, as laid down. The old sloppy ways departed in the car ten minutes ago. Do I make myself clear? I got tickle your ass with a feather. <laughs> what did that man say? What did he say? He said particularly nasty weather. Did you say that? No, I didn't say that. I just said what he said. Who said it then? Oh, I don't know. Someone behind me somewhere. Well, who gave you permission to speak? You did. You said, what did he say? And I said... Silence! He... I was just trying to say what he said. Sergeant, charge this man. What with, sir? With saying the nice... No, with insolence, damn it. Take this rail and give them two hours close order drill. Sir! Come day. On to the left. 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 On the left. Weak. Left. Left, right, Here all this way. Oh, I borrowed a motorbike. Borrowed? Well, quiet. <laughs> Come along, Lieutenant Barrington. Has the cat got your tongue? Oh, it's Harry. The poor devil's been evacuated. Been evacuated with DAH. There's not much happens in the eights that we don't know. He was part of us from the beginning. To go out this. This rotten way. He's just as much a casualty of war as a gunshot wound. Quiet, conscientious man, backbone of the army. Who we missed. Not like some high flyers I know. I think an inspection of the wards might be in order. How did you come all this way to get? Come along, Grum. Read on, Nurse Nightingale. What about uh, the other wards? Every patient that can be moved has been evacuated further back. So, it's definitely another big one. Yes. What's this one useful? Senior officer casualties, generals and the like. <laughs> It'll never be used then. Oh, you never know. good time. <laughs> no, not that. I mean a cigarette. Smoking? Sister Baker, you are a loose, loose woman. <laughs> 
Aren't you the lucky one then? <laughs> so how long has this been going up for? Why, well, since you seduced <laughs> me. <laughs> the smoking. Ever since this awful war became bloody awful. Why, is the packet marked for men only? I wonder what my mother will think when the next mistress of Hereford Downs lights up a fag. Platoon's in position, sir. What? Oh, right. Wonder they didn't hear us in Berlin with the amount of noise some of them made. Yeah, it's still 30 minutes to zero. I know that. Have a like the idea of jumping off halfway across no man's land. To lose the element of surprise. Doing. Stuck out here. Simple dummy. Huns have got a trench's range to within a foot. This way we survive the counter barrage, see? That's really clever, isn't it? Did Marty think that up? What the hell's that? Shells. I know that, you fool. Ours or theirs? Keep calm, men. Keep calm. Brother, fetch my spirit. How are you holding, son? It's just what me dad used to call the grand final nerves. So corporal. Not long now. You'll make it. I've been looking at your boots, Pat. They're pretty good. Yeah, out of tailor mate. Listen, mate. When you get knocked, can I have them? Tell you what. They cost me 100 francs. You give me 20 francs right now, and they're yours when I get killed. Oh, OK. Bargain. What if you don't get killed? Don't be such a bloody pessimist. Of course I'll get killed. <sighs> Seems like preparatory fire. German. Rubbish. Why doesn't the Colonel call this off? Make another sickness out. They'll break! Break? Oh, they bloody well won't. The old hands will look after new ones. We've got a new secret weapon. If he ever gets near the honey, he'll talk the buggers to death. I need to feel this. <laughs> My leg. It's still there. Yeah, no worries, sir. They'll have you back here inside a fortnight. <laughs> Keep your head down. Just lay still. How are the boys? All right, but I reckon we've taken about 10% casualty so far, mate. Bloody beauty. You got it right again. Well, 
bloody whistle. I don't think we should move until we know exactly Just where blow I the bloody whistle! einen Brief geschrieben und meiner Frau in der linken Tasche. Frau Lange? Ja. Kannst du das für mich schicken durch das Rote Kreuz? Natürlich. Ach, dank dir, Freund. Jetzt ist's aus. Wo er mit Gott? Tell him to keep going. No, we must get a message back from Italian. There may be other attacks. We'll dig in here. Captain Young is quite clear what's happened. Now, the Germans, by a fluke, have attacked the same time as us. Now, our barrage is getting away from us. We can't stop here. No! I'm in command of this company. It'd be full hard if you risk any more movements. Anybody disobeyed will be charged with mutiny. Anyone see that? See what? I guess you're it now, mate. Look after the platoon. Right. Tim, drag this poor bloke into cover and get his maps and flares. Company, advance! Find the barrage! Help, you can have the reserves. No, the turn can do it. There's gaps in the wire. Hope so. Then we get our work cut out on the right. Go over here, down. Louis, up to the right, mate. There's a gap in the wire. Cover when I yell. Bill. Yep. There's a gap on the left, mate. All right, Rolling. Right, cover them. Okay. Cover me! 
Oh, you're better for that, mate. Couldn't leave you hanging there. You haven't paid me for that loogie yet. Come on, mate. Holding up the wall. Come on, Rouse! Rouse, you bastards! Rouse! Kaiser! Casualty! Jones and Perkins will get back. McGill's a goner. He's having an escort for this bunch. Bill Hannigan, check the rear. Flanagan, you're a bloody marvel! You and the man... Easy, Ron. Easy. Come on, Raleigh. Look after him, he's one of the originals! You're now company commander, Mr. Earnshaw. <sighs> that hadn't occurred to me. Look, the men would rather have you. You're the only officer left! <sighs> Come on, Max. Boys will follow you. Very well. Sergeant, you are now second in command, so... Appoint new platoon commanders as is necessary. Right. What are you doing, Bludger? Get those prisoners back, now! Move! You'll keep Flanagan. I'll be seeing you. Say goodbye to your friends, Kaiser. Up! Come on, you mongrels! Up! Get up! You know, I reckon there's a chance of breaking through if the heads keep going at it. I don't think so. Why not? The Germans' old ally has arrived. General Mudd. This whole area used to be a swamp. They drained it during the Middle Ages, but it'll revert back to being a swamp just as soon as this winter rain sets in. 
Oh, Christ. First bloody time we get the edge on Fritz and the damn heads throw it away by having the battle in a bloody fog, eh? Brains are in their asses, Max. Good on you, mate. Your privilege, sir. Success signal. Two greens, isn't it? Two greens. I must have got some mud on my eyes. I can't see for the easy, moment. Easy. Take over command, Sergeant. Sir. Stretch your barrels! Well, there's no question of moving. No. There'll be little point. He's coming out of the anaesthetic. Morphine. It may be kinder. And who might you be? Sister Baker, First Australian General Hospital. You're a long way from home? A friend? Yes, sir. I see. Excuse me, please. No. No more morphine. Sister, remember where you are. No more morphine, ma'am. You must understand, sister. Morphine is our only defense against pain. Withdrawal of that may condemn your friend to a great deal of it. Yes, sir, but I think that's better than him falling into a sleep that he won't wake up from. In some cases, that may be the more merciful course. Let me try, sir. Please. Very well. You may stay with him. Doctor, this is highly irregular. The nature of this whole damn war is highly irregular. If we have a faint chance of saving one life by irregularity, then we should try. Thank you, Doctor. Can you hear me? Martin, I want you to open your eyes and look at me. <coughs> Come on, Martin. Martin, just try and open your eyes the once. Martin, you must wake up. Come on, Martin, wake up. Martin, wake up. Come on. Come on, wake up. Wake up. And then there was the time we were bird nesting up in that big old red gun. You and Dick had a fight over the honey eaters' eggs. Dick swung at you like an idiot and fell out of the tree. Remember that? Broke his arm. Never even told us about it. Just walked home as if nothing had happened. Martin, I know you can hear me. 
Look at me. Inside out till the boy. 